Great. So hello everyone. Um, thank you for waiting. Those of you who are here. Um, hope everyone's doing well. Everyone's safe at home. Everyone's still healthy. And I'd uh, just like to welcome you all to day two of ThoughtCast, which will be run by me, Pucho Cat of Queens of Branson Muay Thai, head instructor and owner of Branson Muay Thai's women's only program. So that being said, uh, those of you who are uh, new to what do I have in store for you today, uh, we're going to be talking about the importance of an all women's uh, space and why that matters. So I'm going to bring that in the context of um, an all women's physical uh, fitness or training space. Um, because that is simply the uh, industry that I'm in. Uh, I'm not in any other industry other than uh, martial arts or um, uh, training. So we're going to be looking at the importance of that for women. Okay, so before we get started on that, we got to know the background of uh, the training industry right now and how it came to be. So when you look at uh, most fitness gyms, most martial arts schools, any fitness, sport, athletics um, industry, it's pretty much uh, male dominated. And that's, that all boils down to history, centuries of reinforcement. So, uh, and the, only in the last century, women were allowed to participate in, in sports. So in 19, that was the first time women were allowed in the Olympics. So, you know, women's participation in sports is very, very recent, at least if you look in the context of human history. So the last hundred years, out of the thousands of years humans have been around, it was only in, yeah, the 20th century when we were, when women were given the opportunity to be physically active and for recreational and professional um, uh, reasons, right? And um, back then, we were slowly, women were slowly being permitted to join other sports. So in 1900, only uh, women could do golf or lawn tennis, which were considered more feminine uh, sports. Um, other sports like track and field, gymnastics, women weren't allowed to participate until the 1930s. So again, you're seeing it takes time. It takes time for women to be given the opportunity to train. And then uh, later on in the, um, in the last half of the 20th century, women were solely permitted into other sports like um, swimming, uh, weightlifting. And then only recently in 2012, the boxing category was opened for women. It was only uh, eight years ago, so it was very, very recent. And when you look at the development of sports, again, uh, of professional sports, they've only started to come up in the late 90s and early 2000s. For example, UFC, um, biggest uh, MMA um, uh, promoters right now, they only allowed women to enter the cage in 2010 or 2011, I believe. Uh, yes, spooky peas, thank you. Women, yes, are awesome. And, you know, that says something. Ronda Rousey uh, was the very first women uh, UFC champion. And when I mean, you look at that, like the history of that, Dana White himself said that he's not going to let women into the cage. And, you know, again, 10 years ago, very, very uh, new uh, idea to let women uh, train. So... Again, years of reinforcement, women weren't allowed, given the opportunity to train, so it's only now that we can do it. Therefore, our pool of, you know, wanting to be physically active, learning a skill is still, is still a new concept to a lot of women, again. Um, and when you look at the reason why people choose to train, especially in this time, um, especially in, in this modern era, um, it's a very different reason. There, we're training for very different reasons. So, training prior to the 21st century, again, was only limited to um, 
uh, there was an army, there was in the military. So again, men, women were only given opportunities in the military in the late 20th century. So if you were training, you were training because you were a military or um, serviceman. You had to be physically active and only if you were an athlete. So it's job oriented to be physically active and um, recreational. So if you're trying to get into a profession of sports, that's when you would be physically active. Then uh, with more equal rights and um, you know, the expansion of the fitness industry, sports became more accessible. Sports became more accessible to the everyday person. and Everyone could have a chance to train, not just the super rich or the, um, or the um, military personnel could train. Um, the average person could do it. So <clears throat> now, if you look now at the modern world and where the popularity of social media has taken over, and currently the, one of the currencies of social media is your aesthetics. So um, either you show what you do or you show your body. And that's how you get likes. That's just a fact. Again, no, no judgments there. That's just the way that our industry works right now. So when you look at those set of priorities, that's taken over learning a skill set. This is the reason why people want to train is to, um, is to look good, physically look good, and the uh, second reason why people want to train is so that uh, we become healthy. It's only in the last um, few years that we've discovered, you know, prolonging your life requires physical activity. So, you know, getting fit to look good and staying healthy and learning a skill. That one is now third place. So not that, not that big of a, a deal to, to learn a skill, or at least that's not the priority anymore. So what does that mean? <clears throat> what does that mean for uh, our ladies out there? Right? So we went back to that, um, uh, those three reasons. And for a lot of us uh, ladies, and also some gents, we, we want to train so we look good, right? We, we want to we want to feel confident in, in our bodies. So when we get into a space, right, uh, especially for a woman, for women and getting into a male dominant space where we want to feel confident with our bodies and we realize that we are the other, right? What that we are um, the outsider in this space, right? Get into a fitness industry, eight to two, it's eight guys to two women. And then it just multiplies exponentially in terms of the ratio of the people that are there. So it becomes very intimidating for a lot of ladies when they realize that uh, we are the anomaly, right? It's, it's hard to be motivated to be, uh, to learning and uh, be in an environment where we feel like we don't belong. Um, so imagine like going to a, a party, showing up in, you know, just jeans and a nice shirt, and you realize everyone's in a, everyone's in a suit and tie, cocktail dress, like you look out of place, it doesn't feel like you belong in that party. And everyone in that party speaks a different language than you. You're not really gonna wanna say. So that's kind of the same feeling that a lot of ladies get when they walk into a space that's male dominated. And um, when you bring back that, um, that mentality of, of honing your body image and feeling confident in your body, it's hard to feel uh, safe and feel comfortable when, because you are the other, you attract unwanted attention. So that's one of the major reasons why women decide to just have their own space because they want to feel um, like they belong with other women and they want to feel safe and not have to be, you know, they don't feel like they're the center of unwanted attention. So that's the reason why women choose to have their own uh, space, okay? And now when you relate that back to the fitness journey, right? So the most common fitness journey right now for a lot of people is uh, individualized training, right? Um, you go to your local uh, fitness center, we've got 
you know, hundreds of, of gym equipment everywhere. And you don't really need to work with a group of people to, you know, start working on these machines, right? And you don't necessarily need a private trainer or, you know, a classmate for you to start working out on your own time. So, um, and again, you've got apps to help you and videos, free videos on YouTube to help you, okay, start training. And, you know, that's, that's great for reasons of, you know, availability. No one else can really help you in your own time. You have that, but, okay, number one, you're isolated. It's hard to be motivated to, to do your own workouts and to push yourself if you're just by yourself. And second, uh, you don't have any social structure. Um, there's no social structure to um, help you get better. You don't have the eyes of, of a professional, you know, making sure that every single movement is done right so that you're safe and you do it and that there's a progression. In order to do that, you have to pay extra, right, for a personal trainer that, that costs money, that costs uh, time. And you know the people around you, the peers around you, they're not obligated to help you out. The person that you just are next to at the weight rack, whether or not you're doing something wrong, they're not going to really, you know, speak up. They don't know you. They're not obligated to, uh, to be there for you. And um, third, and third is the lack of um, structure, um, more so in the practice. Like especially if you're just a beginner um, training. It's, it's a bit tough to figure out what should I do first and how should I progress? Like, what are the ways that I can get better? If you're just starting in all in by yourself, it's hard to know. It's very difficult to, to know. So what do we do now? Okay, you're isolated. Um, you don't have social support. You don't have a um, structure to, you know, to start your fitness journey. What do we do? Um, that brings into the concept of a community of practice. So for those of you who whose first time it is to hear that term, community of practice, it's a term that's been coined by a researcher's Wagner and trainer. If you need uh, more information on that, I'm more than happy to uh, send you a link. And the concept of the community of practice is broken down into three traits okay so the first trait a community of practice needs to have first the domain so what is that activity that's what doing is what is that activity that you're all trying to learn right so for example my school queens of brown to muay thai our domain our activity is muay thai okay and then the second trait is the community who are the members of your community. And the members of my Muay Thai community are uh, my teachers, including myself, and my students, the ladies that wanna come in and learn Muay Thai. So think of community as people who share that same interest in your domain. So it's not just random people um, that know about Muay Thai, that doesn't really make you a member. In order for you to be a member of this community, you have to also participate in it. You also have to train in it. And that leads us down to the third trait, which is practice. Okay, so the practice is how this information is being shared. How is the information of Muay Thai being shared among its community, among its members? So. In the case of Queens of Brent Muay Thai, we share our classes through group classes. We share the information of Muay Thai through group classes. Um, now, some online classes. And we have a set curriculum. There's a system of practice so that it's not just random moves that we do. They're all under the structure of um, a set curriculum. And where I get my curriculum is not the genius of my head. It's actually from um, my master, Ajahn Suchart, and where he gets his curriculum from is the Naikonom Tom Association of Thailand. So the Naikonom Tom is the uh, governing body of uh, Muay Thai in Thailand. So 
essentially our curriculum is from the motherland of Muay Thai. And that is our practice. So when you look at that, you know, you've got set activity, your domain, community, and your practice. It's actually like a structured system. And what's great about structured systems is that they nullify these uh, they nullify these cons of working by yourself. Okay, so when you go back to that system of training by yourself at a fitness center, okay, what was the initial problem there? You're isolated, okay, isolated by yourself, you do your own thing. Now, when you are in a community of practice, you're not doing your own thing and trying to figure it, figure things out by yourself. You have a teacher with their curriculum and their curriculum is from their, um, you know, from their superiors. And you follow that curriculum through with a group of people, including your teachers, teacher leads. And in a group setting, you have your classmates with you training at the same time. You're not by yourself. You all learn the same techniques and we all share the same exercises together. So there's no confusion as to what to do. And Again, if you're by yourself, you lack social support. You're in a group setting, you have a teacher, first you need to have an expert, a person that knows how to lead, knows how to run the class. Otherwise, everyone gets confused and you need to have the people around you to support you, your classmates. Um, the great thing about teaching a group class and one of my favorite things about it, and uh, Bruce can attest to it and everyone else that's here that has a trained and learned with me is that I always take time to encourage partners to support each other. Um, I say, uh, this is the um, cleaner version of what I say, either uh, compliment or challenge your partner. And everyone else knows the challenge means another word. But um, yeah, if you have a person next to you you know, telling you can keep going, you can push yourself, and they're there physically helping you do that, your, you know, your, your improvement and your, your happiness when you train, it just increases because you realize, oh, I'm not by myself. I don't suck. This guy's telling me or this girl is telling me that I can do better. Of course I can do better. And you feel more inspired to, um, to improve. Plus, it's just more fun. <laughs> it's definitely more fun to train with other people and it's more uplifting and going back down to uh, what it means to to train in martial arts in particular you actually really need your partner not just for the uh, you know the inspirational talk the motivation speeches you need your partner to help you improve right in martial arts it's a study of combat so you need to know um, what it's like uh, to be attacked, how to defend yourself against an attack, and how to counter um, how to counter an attack. So if you don't have a good relationship with your partner, with your teachers, you're not going to improve in that practice. So you need that. And going back again to um, uh, one of the cons of of training by yourself is is um, getting rid of that negative talk, the negative environment that you, um, that you just have right up here. So when we're left to our own devices, uh, it's easier for us to, to give up. It's um, easier for us to succumb to negative self-talk. And when you're surrounded by a group of people who motivate you, it's easier to get out of that space. And what's most important is that the culture of martial arts makes it about um, what you can do and not necessarily how you feel. So even if you feel like, you know, um, you feel discouraged, in martial arts, uh, there's an emphasis on fighting through that um, discouragement, fighting through those, uh, those internal stresses. Um, my teacher says this all the time, you are not your feelings. And trust me, when you, when you train and things get very intense and you're hitting things or say if you're sparring and you don't want to get hit, you realize, yeah, you are definitely not your feelings. Either um, 
you get punched or you don't. It's okay if you're scared, but the important thing is you don't get punched. Um, and I know that's a very intense example, but that's one of the lessons that we learn in, in martial arts and training with the people in martial arts is that, you know, we are not our stresses. We are not our um, body image. That's not us. We're more than that. And why is that then important? Why should women have that community of practice? Let's bring it back again to one of the first reasons why people want to train or women want to train in particular, and that is to change our image. Um, not going to lie to you, well, growing up, there was some um, <clears throat> uh, body image uh, issues at one point. Um, I was very uh, active in swimming and I ended up having like uh, swimmer shoulders. So like wide shoulders and it was tough to fit in several girls clothing because yo, it was so jacked. <laughs> um, and it felt a little awkward sometimes when I would be around my female friends because they'll you know talk about how it's easy for them to shop because they can wear whatever they want or they compare their 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 bodies to each other. It's like that scene in Mean Girls, if anyone has seen that, where uh, the three popular girls start talking smack about their body. And um, uh, Lindsay Lohan is just like, I, I didn't know that was a problem. <laughs> and yeah, it, it's just, at least from a young age, I was able to recognize that. But I was lucky enough to not let it take over me because um, and one of the things that my mom has taught me is to focus on my talents, not my appearance. So um, growing up, I invested in the things that I love to do, not in the ways that I can look physically good for other people. And that's one of the main things that uh, us ladies have to uh, be strong about is owning our abilities, owning what uh, we have in store for the world, not just based on our looks. And that's exactly what Muay Thai teaches. You know that those three reasons that I brought up about why people train, number one is to look good, number two is be healthy, and number three is to have skill. Well, Muay Thai changes that, reverts that. You train so that you have skill, and then you end up being healthy. And then third, okay, that's a bonus. Looking chiseled is a bonus, but that's not the main reason why you're here. So when you have that kind of message of, not kind, when you literally have that message of focusing on your abilities instead of your aesthetics, that is a message I believe women need to um, continue to hear. And more so not just from just anybody, but from other women as well. We, we have to hear it from other ladies. And we have to hear from ladies that actually also know what they're doing. So that's why having a community where we all put our efforts into improving our abilities is so important because now it's just about how we look or just because the fact that we're girls and therefore, you know, we should be part of this club or we should lead. No, it's because you actually know what you're doing, right? Um, we need to have authentic representation. Like, I don't like hearing um, stories of, of people just getting hired because of, to meet a quota, a diversity quota. That shouldn't be it. You should be hired because you're the boss or you act like a boss and you deserve it. It's not because you meet, you know, an appearance checklist. Absolutely not. That's not how it should be. And when you surround yourself with, with women, um, in that way, and we uplift each other in that way, then we're really making bigger steps towards feminism. You know, that's, that's where it should come from, not from just a lot of talk. Um, it should come from um, credible, um, you know, authentic means, and that's based on what you can do. So, <clears throat> Where are we leading with this? This is why I created Queens of Brands and Muay Thai. Um, because I believe in, in sharing um, 
that message of of the value of your abilities is more valuable than your looks um this is a this is a fight that us ladies have to fight for for a long time and um it only starts when we actually work together literally to um, physically and emotionally uplift one another and martial arts does that in the best way possible so martial arts again is one community of practice if you're already part of martial arts then that's awesome if um, you have other means uh, you have other skill sets that you want to learn by all means shoot for uh, those places those communities of practice just make sure you narrow your, um, you know, you narrow that scope and how to find the best ones. Make sure you're led by, you know, people who know what they're doing, experts. Make sure it's not just fans, like it's people who actually practice what they preach. And make sure you find that there's a support system there too. It's not enough to have people who know what they do. They should also know how to treat you with respect. So, um, Look for those places where your talents can, can grow and where you can share your talents. And also just be a happier and better person. That's where you should put your attention to. And if martial arts is the community of practice that you wanna be a part of and you wanna share it with other queens as well, hit me up. You definitely have a place in Queens of Brands and Muay Thai. Okay, so thank you everyone uh, for coming in today and listening to podcast episode two with Puchoy Cat. Um, I'm excited to share more thoughts, more thought casts. And the next one will actually be this Friday with none other than Doc Ash, who is also a fellow queen. And for those of you who don't know her, you really got to know she is the head um, chiropractor and co-owner of Trinity Collective. So it's, it will be an honor to speak with my fellow queen, Doc Ash, on you know a deeper look into our thought cast and everything else in between. So thank you, everyone. I hope to see you all this Friday. Same thing, Trinity Collective, IG Live, and Facebook. And see you at 3 o'clock Friday. Peace. Yeah. <laughs>